Stampers, Diane Dimitri here with DeeDeeStamps.com, and I want to welcome you to my stamp room. Today we actually have sunshine in Red Lodge. It's been a, a little crazy with the snow. I should have taken a picture of my out my yard because where we shovel, of course, the piles are, well, they're almost as tall as I am. Um, the dogs are having a little hard time. We have to shovel them out a little spot so they can get up into the yard and then they they play all over but anyway it, the sun is shining today it's supposed to start snowing again for the next couple days um, but that's what happens when you live in a ski town so I am doing some cards today that are kind of springy looking and before I get started I just wanted to run over some things with celebration just so you're aware of what's going on and I think we're ready to go okay so celebration Still going on, it goes through the end of March, but one of the issues right now is that, I hope you guys can hear me. I forgot to get on my phone to see if you could hear and see me, but I'm assuming that you can. Which I'm not sure if I should assume anything. Oh, yep. Cool. Hi, Wanda, how are you? Which I'm not sure if I should assume anything. Okay, so I do see that people are on. That's great. Anyway, a couple of things about celebration. So there are a few items that have been sold out, and that is just what happens when it's paper or ribbon or any of those embellishment things because Stampin' Up! has to forecast what they're going to, how much they're going to need, and um, obviously they didn't forecast enough, but the stamps will be available till the end of celebration. So n none of the stamps are actually going away. Um, if you haven't already checked out the options of becoming a demonstrator, you might want to check into this. So Stampin' Up! during celebration is offering up this great tote for people that stamp that, that sign up to be demonstrators. I would love to have you on my team. If you're interested, just send me an email and let me know. Uh, so the organdy ribbon is gone. The butterfly elements just sold out. Everything else is still available if I, if I don't call it out. Oh, the, the Grapefruit Grove and Lovely Lipstick foil paper is gone. That was hugely popular. All the stamps, like I said, are good. And the Precious Parcel Card Kit is also gone. Let me let one of the dogs out. Sorry. They want to get out now a lot because they can. Um, so those are the items that are actually, yeah, that's it. Those are the items that are gone. The rest of the stamps are still available. And then Stampin' Up! has their second release that they put out in on February 15th. And these items are all still available, just so you're aware. Um, the All Adorn stamp set, the Country Floral Embossing Folder, which happens to be one of my absolute favorites. And the Painted Seasons stamp set and paper. Now, Stampin' Up! is having an announcement tomorrow on a third release of Stampin' Up! celebration items. I think some of it has to do with because there's so much sold out out of this. Um, so watch. I will send out an email. Oh, actually, it's March 1st. I'll send out an email and let you know. But... Um, What's going on there? The other thing that I want to talk to you about is the celebration coordination. And I haven't really said much about this because these, these items are not available until March 1st. But that's coming. It's just a couple days away. So celebration coordination is going to be items that, these are items that are actually for sale. And I think what you're going to love about them is we are getting framelits for the stamp sets that we've learn to love at celebration time. And so if you have the Lasting Lily stamp set, there's going to be a framelit set that coordinates with that that you can that you can purchase for $27. So this was free. You have to purchase this. But they have it for that one. Hello Cupcake, which I love because it has the glass or the topper for the for the platter and the cupcake. Plus it has some other little fun embellishments in there, a little you know, a little sign on a stick and and punches on some of those other things. Uh, we have them for the Four Seasons, which is the new, the Painted Seasons stamp set. Coordinates with these um, frame lights. And you can see that you get several of the, of the leaves, two of the pine cones, just to help you get those done. So those are, those are going to be available March 1st. 
And again, watch the website. And then we have this great sentiment set, which is right here. Lots of fun sentiments that go with the stamp sets from Celebration. And then a brand new punch, um, which I'm not sure if I have it here. Oh yeah, here it is. So this is a new punch that's coming out on March 1st too. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. And it kind of coordinates with the stamp sets. So anyway, let's get to stamping because that's what you're all here for. If you guys have questions, ask. I am watching through um, my phone so I can actually kind of see if, as long as it doesn't scroll too, too quickly. Today I'm going to use, oh, so Hoppy Together. This one also has a framelit set, but I'm not going to use a framelit set today. I'm just going to use the... Excuse me, I'm just going to use the stamps, but I wanted to show you the framelits because they're kind of cute. So they they coordinate with this set. And you see you get the lily pad, which I think is adorable, and then a couple of uh, lilies that can go on that lily pad. You get all three frogs that you get framelits for. The dragonfly, the little crown, and then also the three little bugs actually has a framelit that coordinates, matches up with that stamp set. Cuts out each of those little bugs. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I have two cards using the Hoppy Together set. And they're actually, this one here is a very simple card. I wanted to just keep it really simple and just show you a couple of quick tips. This is a great layout, and this would work with lots of different stamps. So, yeah, Debbie, I like the matching framelits with the stamps too. No, no, you made it. That's great. Okay, so what I used for this particular card is, I, if you looked at my Facebook this week, I posted up a picture using these colors, the Highland Heather and the Granny Apple Green, and I just love them. And it reminded me a, a lot of spring, and so that's when I decided, I, that what inspired me to get these colors out today. So what I'm using is a half a sheet of the green, Granny, Granny Apple Green, this was eight and a half by 11. I cut it in half at five and a half. And then I'm going to fold it at, on the eight and a half inch side. And that gives me my card base of four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's just your basic card base. Um, that is the size that will fit in most of And then I took a piece of our gingham, our gingham paper. And this was our gingham paper. You can see the different colors. Um, they're just a really springy, beautiful color. So it's a small check on this side and a larger check on this side. And I'm going to make a, probably going to make a basket or a box. I was going to do it today and I didn't get, I didn't get all my supplies together. But maybe next Wednesday I will do that. And, and anyway, so I took one of those sheets and I actually cut it in half. So this was a six by six sheet. I cut it at three inches. So it's three by six and then I cut it down. Let me grab my cutter here because I see I forgot to cut it. I'm just going to cut it down to five and a quarter. And that gives me a nice layer to put onto my card so that if I line it up over here on the border, you can see where I get just a nice even border all the way around. And like I said, this particular layout would work with any piece of cardstock and any piece of coordinating designer series paper. And then I'm taking a piece of just whisper white cardstock, and this is actually two and three quarters by four and a half, I believe. Yeah, two and three quarters by four and a half. And this is going to be where I'm going to stamp. And let me just show you quickly. So I put my stamps together like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes ago, just before I got started. And I just want to show you how I store them. These are all the ones that I've used, and some of them are on blocks laying around here. But when I put my stamps together, I keep this piece, this, this rubber piece that they come off of. I don't put any backing on it because when I pull off the paper, it's sticky enough, and it sticks to my case. And then when I'm done with my stamps, I can just move them right into these spots. And I don't necessarily always push them all the way in. I just push it, put them on there. But once I'm done with the case, I get all the stamps put in there. I know if I'm missing any stamp sets. So that's how I store my stamps. I can see them from the back, as you can see, and I just keep that piece of rubber to store them in the cases. And that way, they're not flying around. So with this new cling 
Now, we don't have to really worry about our stamps flying around. This one, though, keeps them so they're not too stuck to the, to the, I mean, we all know the cling is really sticky. And this keeps them from sticking to the, um, to the, sorry, to the back of the plastic. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, just a little tip there on how I store my stamps. Okay, so I'm going to take my big stamp here, the big frog on the unicycle, which I think is funny. And I'm going to use Memento because I'm going to use the blends. And I'm just going to stamp my little frog on the unicorn. And then I'm going to come in with these cute little butterflies. Here I go. Get this out there. I, of course, have a mess everywhere. Stamp my little bugs up there like he's juggling them. And then I'm going to come in with my colors. And I just picked colors of the paper. So I've got the Highland Heather blends, the Granny Apple Green blends, and then it's, I used the uh, Smoky Slate to do my, my bike because I, did, I, I looked at black, but I really just thought I didn't want it to be, you know, so black that it was too dark. So I went with the Smoky Slate. One of the things I love about the blends, of course, is that when you're coloring, you, it's like no line coloring. So your, your lines all blend together. I usually start with my lighter color first. And I'm not going to do a ton of um, blending on this frog. I'm just going to do a little bit of shading. So I'm just coloring. And like I said, one of the things that I love, if I was just using a regular marker, I would end up with lines. And with the blends, you don't. Color in all these little creases, crevices. I should have music playing in the background, but I don't know if that's legal. I know on YouTube you have to be careful what kind of music you play in the background because you don't want to uh, do a copyright infringement. I'm assuming that it would be the same for Facebook. And then I tried, I put it up on Facebook or YouTube afterwards, so. I'm going to be a little careful. Okay, so what I'm going to do, then I'm going to come in with my dark granny apple green, and I'm just going to go, like, right around his belly, a little under his mouth, and then I'm going to come in and blend these colors in, and I'm going to use my bullet point, and I just do, like, a circular motion. Get that color to blend out. And you can see how it just gives his body just a little bit of shading. The other thing that I like to do with the blends is you can just come in with the neck with the same color. So I'm doing the light granny apple green right over the top of it, uh, this, that color, the light color already. And just adding a little bit more color. So I just really have the dark granny apple green right in his belly. And then I can just make these just a little bit darker if I choose. By just, once that color has dried, taking the same color over the top. And so when you look at my frog, you'll see where you have the really light granny apple green on his belly. And then I just made him a little bit darker right here. And then just add a little bit of shading on his face with the, with the light again. So you get almost like three different colors. And I probably could keep blending or bring in, you know, the, the clear pen. So I'm going to do the same thing with my little bugs. Only this time I'm just going to go with the Highland. And on my original card, I actually colored in the eyeballs before I realized what I was doing. Those eyes on those bugs are hysterical. They're kind of buggy. And then I'm coming in with my dark Highland Heather. I was really happy this year that Stampin' Up! came out with a, some decent purple colors. We, had, we hadn't had a lot of good shades of purple for a while. And then to do my bike, oh, somebody's having technical difficulties. I, hear, I hate to hear that. And then I'm just going to come in on my bike here and very lightly. I believe this is the light. Oh no, this is the dark. So I wanted this on the tire. 
Did the, the tires dark? And the nice thing about coloring is, yeah, it's not going to be the same as the first one I did, but it's not going to matter. Don't want to get too carried away in making it perfect and not actually finishing it. And I think I'll do the petals in that dark slate. And then I'm going to come in with my light slate and just do a couple more, maybe the gear, and then what's the chain. Really super simple. It's not, I don't want to make it too hard. So I, I'll just show you my other card. But you can see, they look very similar. Um, very similar. So add a little adhesive, and then I'm going to layer my card on here. And so like I said, any stamp set that you have that's longer or you can make longer, a flower or a, a sentiment, there's your basic layout. And you could do this for lots of different cards and they'd all look a little different. Okay, then I'm going to come in with another uh, piece of Whisper White. And I'm going to pull off one of these sentiments off here. There's a couple sentiments in this set that coordinate with, with uh, the set. I like this one that says, I can do, oops, I squished down a little hard. So one of the things you got to be a little careful with is don't squish down so hard. It's not a matter of pressing so hard that, that your image sees I got a little blotch right there. Not that big a deal. Okay, so now I'm coming in with my one and one and a quarter punch. I'm gonna punch out that saying. And then I'm gonna come in with my scallop punch that is one and three eighths. I do like my punches. And Add a little adhesive, put that on top of that, and then I'm going to add this onto my front of my card. And there really, that's a basic card. Super simple. Now, one of the things that I had somebody ask me about uh, in, uh, when I sent them out my newsletter, they sent back a question about how do you, what do you do with the inside of your cards? So I'm going to show you. So I take a piece of Whisper White cardstock, especially if my card base is um, a, a card color base. If I put it on white, I, I just usually stamp inside there in the white. But I'm going to go ahead and stamp on this one. I'm going to bring in a couple more stamps here. Let me put more on my blocks. But... Okay, so I'm going to bring in this little dragonfly. I'm going to stamp that up in the corner. And I'm going to bring in another frog. This isn't the right size block, but I think it'll work. And stamp them down in the corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and color it. Same thing. So I'm going to take the Dark Highland Heather. And I'm just going to go ahead and color this wings. Oh, I know what I want to do. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. I guess I'm doing the dark on the outside. And I'm just doing some straight coloring. I'm not really doing blending because this image is so tiny. It would be, it would be, you could blend it, but I think it would. Uh, probably be a lot of fussy work for such a tiny little image. That makes sense. And then I'm going to come in with the light granny and just color in this body. And this little bugger reminds me of the movie It's a Bug's Life. It's got those buggy little eyes. They both they all do. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead with my. And you'll notice that I really prefer to use the bullet end of my blends. It's just a preference. I have more control. The brush end is nice. If I had a much bigger image, I probably would use the brush end because I think you can, you can get more um, colored quicker. But I'm kind of messy. And so I prefer to use the bullet end at this point. I'm just going to color in my little frog. And I don't know if you know, but these are alcohol markers, and they have a tendency to bleed. So if you color too much, get too much ink down along the edge of your image, it might bleed out just a little bit. And it just really depends on the paper. If you're using the Whisper White Stampin' Up cardstock, it is, uh, they're made for that, and so it's, it doesn't bleed very much. And then I'm just going to go ahead and... Color in his belly. 
And that's going to be good enough. And then uh, what I would do is if I had, or if it was for a birthday, or if it was a thank you, or whatever, I could stamp that in the middle. And then just pop this right inside, like that. And then if I have an envelope, let me grab one. Because nobody at the at the post office, they want they don't like naked envelopes. That's what the gals always tell me when I'm there. So again, I would just go ahead and stamp that. I'd come in with my blends, and I want to be a little more careful because this is not whisper white cardstock. This is an envelope. And so I just want to I, I have never stamped with and colored with the blends on an envelope. This is my first time. You just want to be a little more careful and try to see how much the markers blend out. It's not too bad, actually. I wasn't sure how the Memento ink and the envelope paper would, you know, how it would react, but it's fine. It's working just fine. See Lynette's on there. I, yeah, Lynette, my, my brother lives in Eugene. He sent us pictures of his, it's amazing how much snow is all over the country. I can't imagine what's going to happen down south when all the snow starts to melt and head their way. I'm kind of worried. Okay, so now I just have a really quick envelope that coordinates with my card, that coordinates with the inside of my card. If you want to step it up a little bit, you can always come in with Winkastella. Winkastella is a great product to step up anything. Um, and uh, so this Winkastella is just a glitter. And I'm just going to actually go in and glitter up my little bugs. And then glitter up the wings of my dragonfly. And you probably can't see this. I'll put it up there, but it's just enough just enough sparkle to make it pop off the card a little bit. But there is just a quick and easy, super easy card um, using that frog set. Okay, so now the next card I'm going to do, I'm going to come in. This one I actually didn't decide to do till about five minutes to one. So bear with me. Um, Uh, Wanda Bailey asks, why, don't, why doesn't the post office people like you making your own envelopes? Well, I don't think they mind, but it just costs you more. Um, I still send stuff out. So I had to let the dogs in. I still send stuff out in my own envelopes. I just wanted, you just want to make sure that they can read the address because everything's computerized now. So I don't have an issue here. Not that my gals have complained. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the Stamparatus. I'm going to use the Buffalo Check background stamp. Um, a Granny Apple Green, Whisper White, and the Highland Heather. So it's still the same colors, it's just a different looking card. And I'm going to let me grab the Granny Apple Green cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to start with, I like to do my background stamps with my Stamparatus, and I will show you why. And I think it especially works well with the Buffalo Chick. So uh, what I do is I put one of my mats, the silicone mats underneath here. And that just gives just a little bit more, I think I'm okay because this is a rubber stamp, so I don't even need this piece, the foam piece. And I'm gonna put my card stock up to the corner because I personally like to work in the corner. I'm not gonna use the magnet because the stamp is big. I'm gonna go ahead and, can I cut that down here? Okay. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I like to put something underneath this. That will work. The stamp set case will work. Let me grab something quick. Because, uh, where else put this one? It just keeps it, it makes it easier to evenly ink up your stamp. I'm using a big stamp. So, you know, it might be better for me to pull this out to the middle. But I want to make sure, if I do that, that it doesn't move. So I am going to stick it to the corner. I'm going to put my background stamp up to the corner. I cut my cardstock just slightly bigger than what I really need. And um, it's actually four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's basically card size. But I'm going to chop it down 
when I am, once I get a date. So I'm taking, this is a tone on tone. So it's granny apple green, granny apple green ink. And I'm just making sure that all the ink gets onto the stamp. And then I'm going to flip it over and stamp it down. And because it's a big stamp, you really want to push, put some pressure on it. I think this helps to put pressure on it because this whole, this whole um, piece goes down. And then I can pull it up. And if I want to do it again, I can just go ahead and ink it up again and keep doing that until I get it the color I want. Now I'm not going to do that now just for time's sake. But I am going to take my piece. So that's one of the things I like about stamp reds. I love a lot of things about stamp reds, but you can see where I didn't I didn't have that background stamp. It was as far up as it could go. But that's okay because I'm going to chop this down a little bit. So I'm going to bring in my cutter. And on this particular piece, I'm going to take it down to four. So it was four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to take it down to four and a quarter and cut off that piece. And then I'm going to flip it and take it down to five and a quarter and cut off that piece. And then you will see with my card base, so this was an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock cut in half, folded in half. And when I attach this, onto my card base where I chopped it down. You can see that's just the beginning of the cards. Now the second piece that I'm doing is I'm going to use the, um, the Highland Heather and the Whisper White. And so on this one, I actually ran these through already and these are the stitched rectangles. And one of the things I like is, I love the stitched rectangles. I love that they layer together, so they lay or layer on top. So what you end up with when you cut them, let me grab the piece I cut. So I cut this piece of Highland Heather here, and you can see it has a little stitching line on the outside of this. So I could actually cut this off and use it and add another piece of paper inside there. So you get the stitching on both sides. I'm just going to layer these two, and you'll see how they layer together nicely. Both of them have the stitching on the edge. If I truly wanted to, I could have actually taken this framelit and laid it on here, lined it up and laid it on there, cut it out, and then inlaid this piece into that. But I'm not going to get that carried away with this card because I'm trying to get it done before everybody gets bored. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little frog here. And stamp that down and then I think I'll come in so we're kind of using some of the same stuff we'll use the little dragonfly put him on there and then I'm gonna take this little thing copy for you and just stamp that on there and then you can see where I just have my piece ready to go on all my stamping that I use you could use the stamp radius too and again, you're going to come in with those blends. And color in. You can see how I start to get messy. I'm not very patient. Couple of things to remember. This is the hostess code that goes through uh, February. I am sending out a tutorial using the Geared Up Garage as a freebie for um, any orders placed in February. I've also, since the Painted Seasons came out, oh, the dog is going to start playing in here, so it's going to get kind of noisy. Um, I also did have a to go with that a Painted Seasons tutorial using the um, celebration paper and stamp set and so that that I just um, added that one on with the uh, unit garage so you'll get a package anybody that, that orders $50 or more for me this month will get a package to complete the projects in the geared up garage tutorial the other painted seasons was a little bonus when they had the the bonus, the 
the new products for celebration. So you'll get a package from me with all the products to do the tutorial in the Geared Up Garage. And uh, I'm going to be ordering that stuff March 1st, because I have to wait till the end of the month till everybody gets the hostess code in. And then it will go out next week. Um, I'll, I'll, I should have it. Well, March 1st is Friday. So I would expect it to get the box by Wednesday or Thursday, package them up and get them out to people. Um, so watch for those in the second week of March. Okay, so I'm going to use, this is kind of a fun uh, ribbon, polka dot tool. I love it. It's very stretchy. It goes with everything. It makes everything look good. Um, you can also run this through your ink pads if you wanted to dye this and make your tool a different color. Or you can even color on it with marker and just change it to whatever color you want. And all these little velvety dots will turn the colors you want there. So let me show you quickly. I'm going to do this as a bow. And one of the tips I give people is if you're going to do a bow, you want four lengths of the card. We'll give you, let me grab my ribbon scissors. We'll give you enough ribbon to tie a nice bow. Now this is probably a little bit more than I need with this particular ribbon because it's so stretchy. I'm just going to go ahead and tie this into a bow. Just get right around. <laughs> Sorry, the dogs are, you know, 47 toys in the house and they both want the exact same one. I do love this ribbon because the bows look so pretty. Um, so there's your ribbon, just tied around, and it just comes right around the inside of the card. And I'm just going to slide it where you want it. That's the nice thing about having the, having the ribbon go around the card, is that you can move it, you can manipulate it where you want it. And then I'm going to come in, actually this time I'm going to come in with a couple dimensionals. It's not pretty. <laughs> ah, welcome to my house. Um, dimensionals always add to the card. It always makes, it always gives them just like a step up. I'll just use four. The double sided tape with foam in the middle. But it really does give your card. Ooh. Here it is. I'm going to move this just a little bit more. I'm going to change. There we go. So you can manipulate that bow to do what you want it to do. And then I'm actually going to put this. It's not going to be in the middle of the card. So there's your quick, quick and easy card. And I can actually stamp the inside of this one because it's white with anything that I choose to have on there. Okay, so I am looking. Yeah, Jana says that bows and dimensionals give the postcard fits, or the post office. Yeah, they don't really like anything with any kind of bow. One of the things a demonstrator taught me was if you got to have a card that has that, if you flip it this way, the post office, it won't catch on anything. I think the problem is, is that sometimes these go through the machine and they get caught. But you know what? Sometimes the extra postage is worth it just to have it hand stamped. Okay. Wanda has a house full. Yes, you do. Oh, good. Pat hadn't heard that tip before. Yeah, so if you're doing a bow, do four legs. If you're doing a knot, just do three legs. That's one way to easily measure your, your ribbon. Um, Diana Nab won the, won the stamp set for the week, so she gets to choose one of these. How I do that is I pop all of the comments and the likes and the loves and anything that you do on my, on my live event. And I pop it into a random number picker, and it picks somebody that wins. And she wins this week. So, you're, Diana, you're going to have to get a hold of me and let me know which stamp set you want. Um, and if anybody has any questions, now's the time to ask, because I can actually watch the live feed at, right now while we're doing this. And uh, that's awesome. Thanks for all the likes. You guys rock. Okay, well, there's your postage code for February. If you're in the virtual club, your order's due any day now. March 1st, we have lots of new stuff coming. We have uh, the coordination, celebration coordination products that are going to be available, and also 
there's going to be another release of some products for celebration. Not all of them are new. Actually, none of them are new. So watch for that. And if there's anything else I can do, let me know. Yeah, my dogs, they have been crazy this week, Joan, with uh, the weather. They've been inside, and so today they kind of can go out a little bit. Well, everybody, take care. Thanks for coming, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at diane at ddstamps.com, and I will get back to you. Or you can send me a message on, on Facebook. Take care, and have a great day. Bye.